This video 5 no fins freediving techniques for beginners. We're gonna talk about the arm stroke, how to bring your hands forward, the leg kick, the arm leg coordination and how to maximize your momentum. And as a bonus we'll be talking about your head position. Coming up! What's up guys, today we'll be talking about 5 no fins freediving techniques for beginners to make you a better no fins freediver. If you're new to this channel, my name is Gerd Leroy, helping you master freediving. And honestly, when I started freediving, my life just simply changed for the better. Freediving gave me a space, a way to relax my mind and let go of all my tension. I have found my peace. And now I want you to find your peace through the practicing of freediving. So if you like the idea, consider subscribing and hit the notification bell. Technique number one, the arm stroke. Now let's take a look at world champion Mateus Malina. So let's focus on the arms. So extending the arms in front, in front of the head and bringing them backwards on the sides of your body. That's what we're gonna focus on right now. So you extend the arms and bring them back to the sides of your body. So this is the initial position. The arms are extended above the head. One hand is above the other. As you can see, one hand is on top of the other. And from here, we're gonna open the arms and open the palms as well so we can grab some water. And as you can see, the arms are not totally straight. There is a little bend in the elbow. We can see this clearly here. There is a little bend in the elbow. And then when we are at a degree of 90 uh, degrees, we're going to bring the hands back towards the body. And from here on, we're going to do a triceps extension, like in the gym. So you isolate your triceps muscle and bring the hands next to the body and that is the end of your arm stroke. So then you're gonna bring the hands back in front of you and we will go more in detail on this on the second uh, technique. So we will consider this as an apart technique bringing your hands back in front of your uh, face, in front of your head. So we start again from here, initial position, you can clearly see one hand is on top of the other, opening up the arms, opening up the palms, grabbing some water. The arms are not in a straight line, there is a little bend in the elbow. From here on, we're gonna bring them back together, hands under the body and from here on we start the triceps extension and we go all the way until the arms are straight next to the thighs and then we even give it a little more with the palms of our hands. As you can see, Matthäus here is moving the palm, bringing it up a little bit to get the maximum out of this propulsion. So in freediving courses, instructors could describe this movement as the keyhole because your arms, or at least your hands, are following the shape of a keyhole. If you're having problems in visualizing the movement of your hands, then think about this keyhole. Okay, so starting position, you wanna stretch the arms. If you do not succeed stretching your arms, it's because you're stiff in the shoulders. And then you have to do specific stretching exercises to become more flexible in the shoulders. So some people can only do this. It's because you're stiff here. So you have to train on this stretching to become more flexible. From here, you're gonna open up and bend a little bit. It's like you're rotating the shoulders a little bit and pointing the elbows a little bit upwards. So not like this, but more something like this. So you can really use your muscles here in your back to create this momentum. This, this is the movement so you can truly feel the muscles here in your back you're using. And from here on, when we're in a degree of 90, from here on, you bring them together, not in a horizontal field, but a little bit downwards, and that's where the shape, the keyhole comes from, like a circle. So from here, bring them down a little bit. And from here, we do the typical triceps extension. It's nothing more than this. So you are in this position, 
triceps pulling down so you are using the palm of your hands to push the water away well actually it's the water doesn't go anywhere you're pushing your body away and you're also using your arm so you're using the palm of your hands and also the underarm to push yourself off from the water this is the triceps extension I'm talking about and then when you're here I'm gonna lift my arm a bit so you can see my hands you're gonna give it a little push more you can see that in the video when Mateus is doing this so instead of stopping here you're gonna give it a little more technique number two bring the hands forward if you do not master this technique you're gonna create a lot of drag the purpose is to glide as much as you can through the water and by bringing your hands forward again from this position here bringing them forward again if you are fighting against the water if you cannot slice your hands gently through the water you're gonna push yourself backwards again so this is gonna stop your forward momentum so you want to minimize the drag you're creating by bringing your hands forward again so this is a very critical moment so we are in the glide position hands arms next to the body and from here we're gonna bring bring the arms they're like sliding on the sides of your chest and then on the sides of your head and then bring forward. Let's take a look at that again. Here we have a better view. So this is the glide position. From here we're going to bring the hands inwards and take a look at the elbows. They're not completely flaring out. They are flaring out a little bit but not too much because if you let them flare out too much you're creating too much drag so from here look how close the hands are to the body from here we're bringing the hands it's actually next to your face so it's not like you're holding a book and you're reading it the hands are a little bit more out on the sides of your face and from here you're bringing them more up like more towards your skull now your hands are already above your head and from here you're starting to bring them together and stretch from here elbows flare out a little bit not too much keep the hands close to your body and don't make a fist because I I've seen people making a fist and then you're creating drag so you want to just keep your hands relaxed so they can slice to the through the water like a like a knife slicing through butter on the sides of your face palms are on the sides of your face now they're getting above the head and now you're bringing them together and from here you're just gonna stretch out one hand on top of the other technique number three the leg kick now let's watch a movie from swim england's uh, youtube channel start the kick by bringing your heels towards your bottom with the soles of your feet facing up Your knees should be a little over hip width apart, facing down and slightly out. Turn your feet and knees out and push backwards in a circular motion, keeping your feet flat rather than loose. kick finishes with your legs stretched out together and your feet pointed and streamlined. All right, so turn your feet outwards and then you're gonna kick in a circular motion. So you're gonna do something like this. Bring the feet towards your butt. My face is my butt, this, these are my feet. So you bring them towards your butt and from here you're gonna do, you're gonna turn them outside and do like a circular motion. So you're not gonna do this. You're not gonna do a push motion. This is a common mistake we see. This is a push motion. We're not gonna do this. We're not gonna extend the legs. We're gonna do a circular motion. Circular motion. Very important, everything is important here. Your feet are streamlined. So instead of letting your feet just hang, which is gonna create drag, you're gonna keep them pointed. So this slices way better through the water than this. This creates drag, 
this knot and you would be surprised how much more glide you can create by simply pointing out the feet instead of having them like this. Technique number four, the arm leg coordination. Now, what is that all about? Well, it's actually pretty important. It is when you're going to use your arms and when you're going to use your legs. So we can see he is using his arms and legs alternating. So arm stroke and legs and then arm stroke and then legs. So this sounds pretty obvious, right? But I've seen people who do one arm stroke and then they do like two leg kicks and then one arm stroke and two leg kicks. Some other people mix it up a bit when they just start the lap, so they push off from the wall. Then instead of starting with an arm stroke, they start with a leg kick and then they might do another leg kick and then they do the arm stroke. My advice for this is to just use alternating arms, legs, arms, legs, because this is the standard way we do no fins. So let's take a look now when exactly we are going to initiate the movement. All right, so you extend the arms above the head, make an arm stroke all the way and then glide, 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 glide until you feel the glide almost comes to an end. You're not gonna stop 100% because then you kill the movement. So when the glide is almost over, then you bring the hands forward and then you glide again, glide again, until again your glide almost comes to an end and then you open your arms again. You always have to maximize the glide in between. Don't let it come to a point that you completely stop because then you'll have to use too much power to get the momentum back going. So the question here is, when are we going to start bringing the hands forward? Arm stroke, glides. Okay, so we stopped here. So this is the start of bringing the hands forward. And you can also see that he's starting to bring his heels towards his butt. When he just stretched, that's when he's gonna finish the leg kick. Glides. And let's take a look at this in slow motion. So here he's starting to bring the hands forward. When they are like somewhere in the middle of the body on the chest, that's when he starts bringing the knees towards the butt. So he's stretching now, he is opening up the feet, preparing for the leg kick and when the arms are completely stretched, that's when he wants to kick. He's starting the kick in a circular motion and glides. An arm stroke, bringing the hands forward when they are halfway on the chest, the heel starts coming up. Feet are almost ready to make the kick. When the hands or the arms are extended, kick and glide. And then technique number five, maximizing momentum. So you wanna maximize the momentum by minimizing the frequency of strokes. Hallelujah, what did I just say? So, minimizing the frequency of strokes. You wanna complete a lap, 25 meters, 50 meters, doesn't matter, with the minimum amount of necessary strokes. So, if you can complete a 25 meter lap with four arm strokes, then that is better than completing that same lap with five arm strokes. So you want to minimize the number of movements you're making. And in order to do so, you want to maximize the momentum. So you never want to kill the momentum. So if your body is in a forward movement, you want to find that sweet spot where the momentum is going down a bit, but not to completely stand still. And then you initiate the next movement, whether that is the arm stroke or the leg kick. So you have to train. You have to repeat diving, dive and dive and dive over and over again until you feel this sweet spot. Guys, I promised you a bonus technique, so here it is. Keep on looking at the floor. Now, it is very tempting to once in a while look up to see how far you are already. Now, if you just look up once, that will already have a tremendous impact on your uh, gliding, on your momentum. So not a single time during your whole no fins dive 
you can look up, okay? Question of the day, which of those five techniques is the most difficult for you to execute? Let us know in the comments. That's it, guys. Peace in every breath.